Right. Let's take a good example of the polymer. I'm going to take example as a, a collagen, right? So natural polymer, the collagen, you might have seen it. So the collagen is, you, you could remember it's a triple helix structure. You all know the DNA is a double helix structure, right? Similarly, collagen is a triple helix structure invented by our scientists, right? Especially you could have heard the triple helix auditorium even in CLRA. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the proud, our scientists from University of Madras who in invented the structure of the collagen. And of more than 30% of our body is made up of collagen protein. It is a protein, is made up, right? So more than 30% of the protein is made up of the collagen, right? Every organ has contained some elements of some amount of the collagen, right? It plays a major role in, you know, any physiology or any um, physical structure, right? So it is one of the most commonly used uh, polymer especially the protein-based, and there are 28 types. Out of this, the most commonly studied is type 1, type 2, and 3, 5, and 11. So out of this commonly, the 1 and 2 are more abundantly studied because the 1 gives elastic in nature, so it is going to be more suitable for skin type of applications, where an organ doesn't require any stiffness or hardness, in the case you might be choosing a type 1 collagen for making a scaffold, where if you're looking for cartilage or bone, which needs a rigid in structure, a rigid support, so where you will be requiring type 2 collagen. Okay, right, as I said, it's a natural origin, one of the benefit, it's going to be a good porosity in nature, good, as I said, it's a nature, biodegradable in nature, biocompatible in nature, because it's a natural origin. Well, another advantage is less immunogenic, so it has a lot of advantages. But, as I said, every product has its own pros and cons, even though it has n numbers of advantages, but there's a poor mechanical strength. Right, so there are a lot of studies that have been published since from, even when you look at the early, I mean, late 19th centuries. Maybe you can see a lot of papers from uh, 1980 onwards. Similar, let's have a look at the another polymer, which is a polysaccharide. This is the second most abandoned polysaccharides in the world. The first one is going to be cellulose, right? So where do you can find it? You can find it any hard shells, right? You can see hard shells like crab, shell of your a shrimp, okay, or any insect. When you take some hardness, it gives a protection for the insect or animal. That is even horn, horn of a bull is also made up of a chitosan, right? So it gives a, ultimately, the nature itself give a rigidness and give a protection for the animals or insects. So this is a type of a polysaccharis, as I mentioned before, which is also a abundantly used polymer in the tissue engineering, right? As I said, it has its own advantages, but the thing is, it, ha it, is a, it has its own limitations too, all right? Perhaps it quite be quite rigid in nature, it may not be suitable for a skin uh, kind of crafting materials, okay? Right, uh, let's talk about another example of artificial or synthetic uh, polymers. I quoted just one example here, polyhydroxy acid. So nowadays, due to the science advancement, there are plenty of synthetic polymers which can exactly mimic like, uh, you know, the natural polymer and it does even biodegradable property. One of the important property where believed to be failed in synthetic, uh, synthetic polymers are biodegradability, right? So that can be, uh, that can be compensated by, by the in, uh, invention of science field with the new polymers, right? They can use in a polyglycolic acids, lactic acids, even in a combination, it can be used. Just an example. So what I'm trying to say, what are the different polymers? Even if a people are belongs to a chemistry, they're well known about it. A lot of studies is, is still is going on, even not only tissue engineering, even for drug release studies, right? So carriers, it can act as a carrier, right? So plenty of work is going on about the polymers in, in uh, healthcare sectors, right? So finally, I'm going to touch about the composite material. What does it mean, composite? Anything which is going to blend with one over the each other, then we call it a composites. 
So as I said earlier, when you blend two different products, you're going to have the positiveness of the two both the products, all right? So you're going to have more flexibility, and you're going to have the advantages of the both the products. When you combine together, you have a better property, which is required for for tissue engineering applications. All right, I just you can see a lot of applications are there. All right, so this is one of my paper which I've uh, developed and published with the help of the collagen and chitosone. It's a uh, uh, the combination is studied uh, plenty of time and the well studied materials. Uh, of course, we have tried uh, to use some of the phyto components along the mixture, and we found that phyto components was. Uh, Aloe vera. So we found that the presence of the phyto components in the combination of the chitosan and collagen, which facilitates the, you know, facilitates the cell growth and it is suitable for tissue engineering applications. Right. This is another unpublished data in a cartilage tissue engineering applications. We extend the studies by using a chondrocytes. So we cultured on on both the with and without aloe vera, chitogen, collagen, scaffold. We have, we, have, we have studied it and correlated. We found that the presence of phyto compound which improves the structure, growth of the cell, and also improve the morphological property of a chondrocyte, which is a spherical in shape, unique property of chondrocyte, so that it can be useful for artificial, artificial synthesis of a cartilage material in the lab skill. So we successfully did it too. And it was well confirmed by the markers a cartilage markers, and it shows a positiveness in the, in the tissue uh, regeneration, especially the cartilage regeneration. And it is also verified with the help of the histo uh, histology studies for the secretion of collagen. Right, so this is uh, another study where the hydrogels was used as a, you know, the carrier. Right, you might have studied, uh, if or you might have heard about that hydrogels are used as a drug delivery system. Ide ideally, it's going to act as a carrier system, which holds the drug and it's going to release it. Perhaps by the manner in which you're going to design it, whether it's a sustained release or delayed release or controlled release, whatever it is. So, hydrogel is one of the important carrier system in even in drug delivery system. That can be effectively used even in tissue engineering and regeneration regeneration. Uh, feel to. So here, instead of the drug, you're gonna you're gonna embed the cells inside the hydrogel. As you can see, there's a fluorescent structure published by the uh, particular et al. Uh, the people. So as when you look at the confocal structure, the confocal image, they observe the fluorescent emitted from the cells, so that the cells are embedded inside the inside the hydrogel. So over a period of time, the hydrogel will be decomposed and it is entirely replaced by the cells which they seeded. So it is a good achievement and of course the lot of study, studies is, is, is on going on across the globe. Right, so I'm just not going to go into detail about it. So uh, these are the different tab, uh, techniques which can be used for fabrication of scaffolds because as I said, one of the element is biomaterial, right, out of the tissue engineering triad. This biomaterial is an important element out of the three. So, which the biomaterials can be useful for the fabrication of scaffolds, right? So, what are the different methods? As I said, architecture is very important uh, elements to be fulfilled by any biomaterials. If you want to cast or if you want to mold a scaffold, it should be flexible in nature, right? So, accordingly, the techniques also going to be very. So, there are plenty of techniques which is being used in the tissue engineering field. It's the most uh, Commonly and lab scale, you can go by you know solvent ca casting technique, uh, even lyophilization technique, all right? But the most advancement is happening with the help of the tissue. I mean the electro spinning. I hope there will be a talk on Monday. We're also going to talk about on electro spinning. So uh, electro spinning is more advanced uh, technique where that can be used for the fabrications of you know, scaffold material. That can be useful for even for drug release studies where you're going to entrap the drugs inside the same manner you're going to apply for the cells. Where the cells have to be used for seeding on top of the mesh 
on top of the supporting material as a scaffold in which the cells will be growing on it. Right, another important uh, technique, which is a hot topic, is bioprinting. So, in fact, the bioprinting is not a new term. Likewise, the tissue engineering is officially recorded in uh, late 19th century. Similarly, the bioprinting, 3D printing, is recorded in 1984. So that was the journey it started. It's bioprinting, it is relevant for printing an artificial organ or tissue synthetically, right? Upon which you're gonna see the cells on it. But again, this bioprinting not only related to the biological field. When you would have heard about 3D, 3D printing, right? It's a simple 3D printing. You might have seen the 2D printing, the taking a printout in a paper, right? That's a 2D printing. But you can do the three-dimensional printing, a very hot topic. It has been used for across various fields. Even engineering fields is more popular, especially for building architecture and building, you know, uh, automobile industries and um, aerodynamic industries where they can cast, they can mold the structure what they want. So this is one of the techniques, very popular. You can generate a solid substances in a three-dimensional manner uh, and can be carved the uh, structure which you're interested in. One of the beauty of this technique is the more complex structure can be easily, can be printed out. Right, so this picture, so the same principle is going to apply in the bioprinting. So the, the, the prefix bio comes here is because you're going to use the 3D printing uh, mechanism for the development or, or printing the any organs which is going to be viable in future. All right, so as you can, the prosthetics, see, uh, ear lobes, of course, some of the uh, bones, you can see that even the dentils, okay, you can also mold according to the shape you want it. That's a very important, uh, unique applications of 3D bioprinting, right? Uh, another beauty of this 3D bioprinting, even a complex organ, of course, as I said, some of the skins, you don't, it, it not, not require any complex, uh, you know, designing, right? It, can, it is a flexible and even uh, you can mold whatever the shape you want and it doesn't play as impo um, important role. But when you go for the, some of the complex organs like liver, heart, so it has a multiple organs inside, multiple valves, multiple tissues, each will be performing its own action. So when you're crafting, or when you're crafting the 3D architecture of the organ, it's a bit challenging. Even though we say it can be done it, then again, still it's challenging, but one day it's gonna be achievable. Right, let's talk about another technique in tissue engineering. We talked about the scaffold, we talked about the different types of cells, we talked about the signaling molecules, the signaling, of course, what were the growth factors which you're gonna add, which is gonna differentiate the cells into that particular cells, right? For example, if you use a VEGF, as an endothelial growth factor, that is gonna differentiate the cells for the for the generation of blood, blood vessels, right? So similarly, whatever the markers responsible for that, the cells will be differentiated. So now, as I said, we talked about the uh, various techniques for scaffold formation and various techniques for cell harvesting. You can harvest the cells in an in vitro, then you can transplant it, right? But what are the other way? So this technique is gonna give a solution, right? So anyway, due to the, uh, it, it'll take a, quite some time for to achieve a 3D printing to develop a complete an organ, especially the complex organ to make it functional, all right? But what is the other solution? Yes, parallelly, there are other fields is also is, is running on, right? What is this? It's, you're gonna take the organ from a cadaver, cadaver, the, per, the people or the person who deceased, uh, where the organ is also deceased, cannot be used no longer. So in that case, you can harvest the, the organs from the cadaver and you can do the decellularization process. What does it mean? With the help of the perfusions, uh, and, the, and the buffering solutions and, and um, perfusion technique, you can remove the cells. That process we call a decellularization. So by doing so, you can see in, two, in 48 hours, you have the scaffold. It is a heart, 
but devoid of the cells. Only the structure, only the matrix, extracellular matrix, it gives a structure of it. So this is the, uh, 48 hours, you will end up with the hearts. It doesn't have any cells at all. It's simply a scaffold material. So what you do, when you see the cells now, when you see the cells now, the cells will grow on it, and one, then it'll, over a period of time, it will give the liveliness to the cells and the heart will start beating it. The same application also goes, another study is also, they found it, they, they re, uh, re, decellularize the, you know, the liver, right? So they completely, they remove the cells from the liver, right? All the hepatocytes has been removed. So finally, you end up with the scaffold, which is completely devoid of the cells. So you're gonna use this as a scaffold, then you can see the cells of hepatocytes, it'll start growing it. So then you can give the second life for the diseased organ. So this is, again, this is a unique, uh, you know, field where it's a lot of studies is going on, all right? This is going to be alternative uh, method for developing a new scaffold, all right? Okay, this is another study this is published by University of Minnesota, where they've taken the rat heart, they decelerate the heart, apologize, they decelerate the heart and they end up with the complete decelerated heart as, which is gonna act as a scaffold. Again, they start uh, seeding the cells of a cardiomyocyte and fortunately, or quite luckily, the, after 40 days of time, this, the, the heart, the right heart start beating it. And the beauty is, they randomly seeded the cells in the heart, but the cardiomyocytes, as I said, the cell hearts are made up of myocytes, cardiomyocytes. But remember, only 30% of the cells are made up of cardiomyocytes. Now the entire heart is gonna be, gonna, does the function of beating. Only a fraction of cells, which are responsible for beating purpose. That's what we call as myocytes, right? Cardiomyocytes. So the, the beauty of the innovation is, when they see the cardiomyocytes, it tend to migrate to the location where it's supposed to be, and in 40 days, it start beating it. So it is one of the uh, good invention and gives a hope that having a, uh, having a live organ from a diseased organ is going to be you know, fruitful or going to be realistic in the near future. Right, let's talk about the challenges. What are the challenges? I've talked about the N numbers of applications, about the postures of the tissue engineering, how it can be effectively replaced in an organ, a partially degraded organ. So we all did it, and uh, occasionally uh, the research is going on full-fledged and around the corner of the globe, and they keep publishing the data. But still, we can't deny that what we success is just a tip of an iceberg. A lot of failures is behind it, all right? So due to this science and technology advancement, of course, still the, the duration which we're gonna target, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna reach our complete target, which is nothing but regeneration of a complete complex organ. That is our target. Not a skin or uh, 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 simple organs that can be done it. But even having a heart donors, or, you know, kidney donors is a quite a challenging. Isn't it? The, so the people are dying around the world due to the lack of uh, lack of organs for the transportation. So, of course, hopefully this failure is going to be one day is going to be uh, turn over the uh, dreams to the reality. But the distance to be traveled is quite a long way to go. But definitely one day will happen. Perhaps we may not be able to predict whether it's the next year or the following year or in a decade is going to happen. But certainly, it's going to happen one day. But the thing is, when it is going to be considered as a successful, when anything could be delivered to the common people without any hindrance of the cost, then we call it as an achievable, uh, then it's, got, it's achievement. If it's done but unaffordable by the common people, then that invention is going to be still is considered as a, you know, uh, unsoundful. Right, but anyway, the science and technology definitely one day will bring all the hurdles to a, a positive manner to make it accessible for every every of the person. All right, 
So other than that, you can see the, some of the ethical issues also still be there. And as I said before, some of the complex organs still is challenging, even in 3D bioprinting. It's a, quite a challenging task to do so. And again, it will take a, a lot of research. Again, the understanding the physiology itself a huge task. What we can predict in a theory that may not be reflected in the, uh, in the practical, right? So a lot of things has to be thoroughly studied. That's the research is keep going on around the globe. So one day, all the things can be, you know, achieved and make it possible for the common man. Okay, so when it gets access, of course, when you want to do any uh, research on this, my suggestion is going to be, you try to follow, read the articles, read the articles. As I would like to say, this pandemic situation has given opportunity for the students who can interact with any part of the globe. For instance, scientists from USA, even in this platform, Dr. Pushwathaman has arranged some of the eminent person from UK, USA, Malaysia, and other, even Arab Emirates, right? They're gonna share the experience, they're gonna share your thought. So who knows, that could be a Kindle for your, your, uh, your interest. So you may be one of the uh, future tissue engineering personalities, you may develop a you may assist in, in terms of regenerating organ. So there is a lot of opportunities in the in the online, even especially try to be in part of the LinkedIn. A lot of groups are there. You can try to join them and keep continuing your readings and just set your target, what you want it to be. And a lot of opportunities there in the online. Try to track it. Try to follow it. All right? So definitely one day you're going to achieve a dream. All right? Who knows, the history may read your name in the successful of any tissue regeneration in future. So with that, I end the presentation. I would be happy to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Really, it's a great presentation. So I am I'm very, uh, very happy and uh, very surprised in some of the slides you presented. I'm very happy and I am thank you once more uh, uh, for your uh, common presence in the uh, Biojina 2021. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, friends, uh, now you can uh, shoot your questions to Doctor Jitendra Panichal. Uh, kindly raise your hands. Hello, sir. Hi, hello. So this is Mutish and good afternoon, first of all. Good afternoon. I have, I have some short of questions like uh, in tissue culture, can we develop any different types of cell uh, in in vitro condition? If not, why cannot we develop that cell in in vitro condition, sir? Right. That's a good question. Perhaps if let me correct you a question. All the cells can be cultured in the in vitro condition, no problem. But in term, the objective of the tissue engineering, you have to make it possible to function. The function of an organ comes from the cells, isn't it? So you can culture the cells, but you want to get any function of an organ, that's a tedious task. That's where the tissue engineering comes into the picture. So uh, there, are, there are applications, research is being, even in clinical, studies has been proven for bone regeneration, skin regeneration, it's already there, the procedures. But our focus is more about the complex organs and some of the genetic diseases, right? There's still the research is going on, so certainly one day it's going to be addressable. So it is possible. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Have I addressed your question? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Anyone? <clears throat> Any other like to ask questions?
or any other like to ask questions okay okay thank you dr jitendra pani selvam sir uh, for uh, giving your presentations and uh, pleasant answers to the questions uh, thank you very much doctor thank you very much thank you very much dr prashant and probably allow me to thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my experience i hope this session is quite useful for the students of course you try to pursue your dreams in science field i definitely this is also going to be very useful i believe i've delivered my best of interest to kindle your interest towards the tissue engineering and first of all thank you again thank you once again dr pushor the man and the team to giving this wonderful opportunity to share my experience to the young minds thank you very much indeed have a nice day thank you doctor thank you thank you very much definitely the program and your presentations will be induce a person to become a tissue engineer no problem that is you know i have a confident with that that your presentation uh, says the clear story about the tissue engineering so really impressive uh, so number of persons uh, inspired in your presentations and definitely uh, they will become a tissue engineer thank you doctor thank you thank you very much once again for your presence here thank, thank you, you very much thank you very much bye bye sandarya sandarya give the word of thanks to dr jitendra pani selvam sir <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your vast expertise with us. Your presentation was brimming with useful information. Thank you, sir.